let's start with the reading for the collective. Take what resonates throughout the rest. Watch out for scammers in the comment section pretending to be me to listen to you for readings. That is not me. But everyone is well. We need to know. We need to know. Ooh, we've got two. Tessia. And then Marguerite Porate. I'm not sure if I know if I'm pronouncing that right. So Hestia, the goddess of sanctuary. No matter where I am, I am home. The most sacred sanctuary is found within me. Marguerite Poret. Porate Poret. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. The mystic of divine love. Love is divine, and I am nothing except love. And then under this deck, we have Bridget, the goddess of the eternal flame. I am an eternal flame, and each day the light grows brighter. So this is the divine feminine deck. Let's look up Hestia. Let's just see what Hestia yeah, page 178, 178, I feel like um, this is confirming the direction that you're going. Hestia represents the warmth, protection, and sanctuary we feel when we know we are home. Hestia is an ancient Greek goddess of the hearth. hearth. Her name translates as fireplace or altar. She is the firstborn daughter of Cronus and Rhea. Her brother Zeus assigned Hestia the sacred position of tending to the Olympian hearth. She is known for her calm, abiding presence and her tremendous kindness. Sounds like you. In ancient Greek culture, Hestia is the divine personification of the sacred fire that sits at the center of someone's home, as well as in the center of every town and village. Wow, that is definitely you lighting up your spot. She would receive the first and last sacrifices of each day. With the establishment of a new village, the flame from Hestia's public hearth in another city would be carried to the new home. Yes. Yes. Hestia is the fire that grounds us, the hearth we can gather around to stop our wandering. Hestia is an emblem of the warmth, safety, and nourishment of being in community. She represents that tangible and yet unseen connection between all our loved ones. And she's the calm, abiding presence that can only be found within. Wow, so it's considered a sacred obligation to shelter and protect those in need. And you definitely have that energy about you. Um, obviously not saying to go uh, doing something to, uh, you know, overextend yourself, self-care first. But I feel like this is the energy that you, that you are admitting. And I feel like that thing is a um, clarification of that. And um, yeah, Marguerite Porete. Does anyone know how to pronounce this? Porete, Marguerite Porete, um, page 17. So, the mystic of divine love, Marguerite. Poret, poret is the essence of divine love and the truth that all we are is love. Marguerite, um, okay, so she's French, so the pronunciation would be poret, because there's an E after the T, poret, 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 poret. <laughs> I hope that that gave you a good laugh. All right, my pronunciation, I did my best. Um, <laughs> Marguerite was a French Beguine born in the mid 13th century. The Beguine movement was a spiritual revival among women in the late Middle Ages that emphasized an imitation of Christ's life. Wow. These Beguines, or holy women, lived together in semi-monistic semi communities. They were not nuns. They didn't take formal vows and could leave at any point, but they lived with shared spiritual intention. Wow. Marguerite wrote a spiritual masterpiece titled The Mirror of Simple Souls. 
It reveals the spiritual process you went through to be transformed by divine love. I am God, says love, for love is God and God is love, and this soul is God by the condition of love. That's so beautiful. I know so many of you, that's what you live by, and it's true. By 1306, the Bishop of Cambrai deemed her work heretical and condemned it to, the, <laughs> to be burned in poor Red's presence. Even so, it continued to circulate widely through the Middle Ages, and in some ecclesiastical centers, it was embraced as an almost canonical piece of the of theology. Poret, <laughs> Poreté was ordered to stop circulating her book and to recant her ideas of God as love, but she refused. Well, Marguerite was arrested, oh man, as a relapsed heretic and a free spirit, which included the belief that humans could achieve union with the divine. The Catholic Church conducted an unpresented trial to decide her fate. Like Joan of Arc, much of her life is recorded because of the transcripts of her lengthy trial. She maintained her truth that the soul has no other will but God's, and that when the soul is united with God's love, the state of union causes the soul to transcend the contradictions of this world. It's so true. I'm so sorry that happened to you, Marguerite. I really am, but we're here for you. Um, she suggested that we can be transformed by divine love into love itself, which isn't separate from God, and that ultimately no outside source is needed in this transformation. Yes, it's between the soul and God alone. Oh man, Marguerite was burned at the stake in 1310. The Mirror of Simple Souls continued to gain in popularity, but was distributed as an anonymous text until 1946 when Romana Guarnieri identified Latin manuscripts of the Mirror in the Vatican. Marguerite's name returned to the text when it was published for the first time in 1965. You gotta be kidding me, 1306 all the way to 1965. Wow, it took them that long to open up to the idea that this feminine energy, this divine feminine energy was just preaching that God, or not even preaching, just saying that God is love and connect to love and God. Wow. How many hundreds of years is that? 660 years, something like that. Um, well, I, you know, this message is obviously for you. Um, I feel like we're here to, you know, live that same truth, um, not as alone as Marguerite was. No, she didn't have the internet. <laughs> wow. And so, um, you're creating that sacred flame. You are that sacred flame, the continuation of that Christ consciousness that she's talking about. And, um, yeah, let's see what else, what else do you need to know? That's so, that is so beautiful. Marguerite and Hestia. There you are, six of wands. You will be successful in this. You will be successful in this. Whatever agreements that you're planning or thinking about or building or manifesting, you will be successful in this plight. Uh, wow, will of fortune and judgment are the challenge position. So I'm gonna find out why that is. Um, Maybe you feel like challenged by that or the biggest challenge has to do with the, your way you're thinking about it or um, feeling like pa it's patience, having to do with patience maybe. Uh, wheel as a challenge, maybe you're feeling like um, you know, that you've been forsaken or something, but because that's in the challenge position here, wheel of fortune and judgment are very strong. You feel like you are guided to do something here and um, maybe are feeling attacked as like a light worker um, and wondering when the shift comes 
or something like that, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clarify that. That's really strong. Wheel of Fortune and Judgment as a challenge. Because this is for you, so... Um, it has to do with someone who... Or just feeling, like I said, feeling attacked with this Knight of Swords in reverse. A lot. Um, the challenge has been... It's not, you're not wishing anything on anyone. But you would like for it to all stall. Something became illuminated here. Like, with your joy, it stopped something for someone or several people here. Some kind of, like, bottoming out energy. People were living in some sort of an illusion. Some sort of an illusion, especially as some one or particular masculine energy um, is presenting themselves. Could have to do with a Ten of Pentacles situation. Sort of wealth building, familial wealth. So, um, you might be feeling, you know, like emotionally stuck around some dream come true here. Um, or like you've, your hands are tied or there's something that you need or that you, this energy, you know, when's it going to turn? Uh, you, you've definitely seen, you know, things are going to shift. You know that here with the Six of Wands. Um, it's like you're trying to, you want to move away from something or there's something you want to like separate yourself from or it's this some sort of like an energetic stalemate maybe. Um, maybe it feels like one more thing or something like that. Um, or... or what it could be is also just you know that you're in this divine timing here. That there's a lot going on. Some of these transits or energies have nothing to do with you. So you're navigating this kind of world where the biggest thing has to do with divine timing. It's not that you're... I don't think you're... Yeah, you might feel like... You, you could question, you could say to yourself, you know, what is all this for? Or, you know, I see the shifts, I have faith, um, but is this going to finish in my lifetime? Is it all just about the effort and that's enough? Or is this going to actualize fully the vision that I have, what I've been planning, that I see for the future? Um, and you might be feeling really stuck about moving away from from something or wanting to move away from someone or something here. Um, in the near future, we have four of wands. There's that milestone. It's coming. It's coming. That could be marriage. That could be a celebration. That could be um, making it to the next phase. It could be a, something to celebrate here. That could be a union energy as well. It could be union within yourself or union with a masculine uh, or feminine counterpart. And you're holding that hearth. You are the sanctuary. You are the home. Holding that love home energy. You are feeling like there's a tower happening. Maybe that you're watching or that you're experiencing. People see you as very creative and confident. In the upright, so that's good. You're being seen in a nice light. Maybe very like enigmatic as well. It's, that's what it is. Justice. This is your biggest kind of, you know, you're not wishing anything on anyone, but it's like karma. It's the timing, divine timing of karma. This is in the challenge position. Wheel of Fortune, Judgment, and Justice, all in your reading. That's huge. You're looking at what has been done to try to stop this love energy. Um, what it is that you're trying to self-actualize and produce and how 
you know, there's been a lot of energy that's been trying to block you. Um, you feel like that they're, they're going to keep going until they drop. And uh, you're wondering about how it's all going to unfold so that you can proceed forward without all of the um, distraction, negative energy, uh, nefarious energy, contrarian energy, people working against you, people not seeing you for who you are, um, defamation, gossip, lying, untruths, uh, being gaslit, um, all of all of it. And you're looking at the divine timing of it all, and you're, you're wondering about it. But it's not that you don't have faith, it's that you feel like, you, you might feel like a rush against time a little bit here, and wondering how it's all going to come together, and wondering why you might not be seeing the justice playing out directly, or you might see it and know it, but for you... It's not that you're wishing anything bad, you just want that all to go away as quickly as possible and there's been a lot of injustice that's happened and not only that, you, yeah, you feel like you have a lot to do, a lot to do and you've gotten through certain challenges. You might know that there's a transit coming up here too with this Wheel of Fortune um, and feeling like you know, the sort of like karmic energies or, you know, twisted, nefarious energies are going to be trying to work against you, but you know that you're, you're doing well and you can see the support and you know you have the protection. But so it, that's what it kind of feels like to me is not that you don't have faith. It's just that you're wondering about the injustice and how it's all going to play out, but you don't sit in that energy. Because you're more of the Hestia goddess of the sanctuary. No matter where you are, you are home. So you're good. But there is, that it seems, the biggest challenge is this divine timing that is outside of yourself. I hope I'm explaining that the right way. Because it's not that it's not negative. You're very, very positive. Wow. Outcome. It's up to God. I feel like working through people some sort of structure. I feel like you'll have the backing of what structure that you need. And then under the deck, we have strength. So this is beautiful. Very, a very, very balanced willpower and um, positive energy coming from you. So um, yeah, it's, it's all working out as you hope that it will. So just keep focusing on that warmth that warmth and that divine love, that connection, and just one step at a time. All right, I hope that that helps if this resonates with you um, to clarify your, your intuition. And um, yeah, I will see you on the next read, bye.